Leanza, I just, I just wanted to welcome you all today. And if you haven't, but I think everybody probably has, just make sure you keep yourself on mute um, while we get underway. <clears throat> There's just a few more people coming in. Anyway, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this Lianza webinar. Um, hashtag one lib, one ref. I'm not exactly sure how you're supposed to say that, but I think that'll do. <laughs> that sounds and, right. And um, we were uh, have promoted this um, campaign a couple of times, and Mike very kindly offered to sort of uh, kick off and help people get started with um, learning a little bit more about the campaign and also about um, what you can do uh, and how to actually get started with editing a Wikipedia reference. Um, so Mike's done a few webinars for us before. So thanks so much, Mike. And I'm gonna hand over to him to uh, welcome us all with a karakia and to get the workshop underway. Um, kia ora, Anna, thank you. Let's just get started. Um, Kia ora te marino, ke whakapapa paunamu te moana, hei hurahi mā tātou i te rangi nei, aroha ato, aroha mai, tātou i te tātou katoa. Hui e, taiki e. Thank you, kia ora koutou katoa. It's lovely to see all your little boxes with um, muted microphones in, um, an endless stream of them, and some of the names that I know, and I know that there are people on the other side of those names, and I will try and remember that but if you've ever given one of these you know it's very strange sometimes to be speaking into the void and hoping and hoping that not everyone has just stopped out for a sandwich or is checking their email or their facebook but i trust you're all hanging on my every word and that is the that's the kopap room which i will head forth on this all righty and i see some names i know there kira rob kira uh, siobhan it's great to have siobhan leachman here she's been an enormous supporter of this whole process and has run some training herself and i've even filched a couple of your slides siobhan i hope that's okay um, so what i wanted to talk with today is give you a brief introduction into what the heck hashtag one ref even means and why it's something that librarians should be getting behind librarians and information professionals can take part in this international campaign to add a reference to Wikipedia each. And in the process of showing you how to do this, you'll get more of a feeling for how Wikipedia works, why it's important for you and for all, all the visitors and all your clients and customers in the library, and why there's such a big problem at the moment, particularly with New Zealand content, where critical referencing and critical accurate information is often missing from articles that people are accessing every day and how we as information professionals and librarians can help stop some of that. So uh, let's get started. I'll first just give a, a little um, run through of the how one live one ref works, how a reference works. The slides I'm sharing will all be, I'll share the link in the chat so you can download them and go back through the written instructions at your leisure. And when it comes time to do a live demo, you can uh, interrupt and ask questions and we'll have a chat, um, a, a nice little quadero about what's going on in the, the nutty details, because I'm sure you will have very specific detail questions being librarians. Um, but if you'll bear with me, we'll just go through the overview, write down your questions and we'll all address them at the live. Um, okay, let's go through it. So I'm at the Westland District Library and have been there since November as part of the NZLPP scheme. I'm a digital discovery librarian which means that my mission involves trying to tell West Coast stories and get them up there on the internet particularly. And so some of the projects I've been involved with that involve Wikipedia or Wikisource, uh, we're doing a project on artists of the West Coast who are generally invisible on the internet and have almost nothing published about them. Uh, we've done a project specifically on the luminaries, getting every edition of the luminaries into Wikidata and getting photo photographs of Eleanor Catton and prizes from her publisher. I am working with Department of Conservation researchers and information uh, people to tackle the coverage of the rep endangered lizards, the West Coast's endangered reptiles, which um, in some cases only exist in an area the size of a small paddock, 
but are critically endangered. And again, almost no information uh, available on them outside the DOC website, which is pretty sparse. I'm digitizing out of copyright, out of print books using volunteers who are proofreading and transcribing using the service Wikisource, which is a sister project of Wikipedia. And one of the books we've published has been our history of the street names of Hokitika, which is now turning into a public volunteer project to try and document and photograph all those streets and the people that they're named after. And all of this is happening um, in a volunteer group called the West Coast Task Force, which is purposely sounds impressive. Um, you can click on there and you see the sort of meetings and um, projects that we're working on. So that's to give you an idea of where I've come from and why I'm interested in how in a library context, Wikipedia can be used to tell community stories and get the community involved in using our resources, our spaces, and working together. One Lib One Ref is a twice a year campaign that's organized around the world uh, that this is its homepage here, onelibronref.org, and it has plenty of supplementary information there. If you want to just click through, you can read all about how it works and what it's been achieving. But the key thing is it's a call to librarians to try and get library professionals and anyone, actually this is very inclusive, anyone who cares about referencing, um, to add missing references to Wikipedia articles. And the reason we do this is that Wikipedia is super important. It is actually now the first port of call for where all of our visitors, all of the people who use our library are now getting information first from a Google search and the Google search sends them initially to Wikipedia and to a Google info box on the side of the screen, which also draws from Wikipedia. So if people are finding, looking for information, that's where the web is sending them to start with. And if we're lucky, the Wikipedia articles will be well referenced and those references will send them to journals, newspapers, printed books, and those will then send them to our library and our resources. Um, but sometimes that whole system breaks down and big gaps form where an article might be too short or might hardly exist and may have missing or no references at all. Um, so we had to try and fix that problem. And this is why this uh, twice a year campaign was set up to help train up librarians and see, show them that anyone, anyone can help improve Wikipedia and it does not take very much effort or time. Um, so citations and what you can cite. So Wikipedia is a summary of already published information. So it's not a place for a, a original research or your own thinkings or opinions. It has to be, every article is supposed to be a summary of already published information. So anything in there that is either a direct quotation or a fact that is not common knowledge, I don't know what that means, um, or anything that might be controversial or challenged uh, needs to be backed up with a reference. And it's the same way that I used to get growled at in my university essays if I would make blanket statements. My lecturer would put a little citation needed or a question mark at the end of it. Um, so we should be, that, that's, that's the ideal state. It is sometimes not reached. So what are the references that we can use? There are, is a definition in Wikipedia, reliable sources, uh, which is explained in great detail on the help pages of Wikipedia, but a reliable source has several different um, components. It's independent of the subject, so it's not the subject's own website or own personal publications. Um, it should be published in some form. That means it's been through a publication process and particularly one where at least another pair of eyes has gone over it. So there's fact checking involved. Um, the publication process usually, but not always, means that we can trust that source more than if it was just a random Facebook article or a random blog. So it's purposely nebulous, but it's gone into in great detail in Wikipedia is, and a lot of arguments over what really counts as a reliable source. There are entire newspapers that are now discredited as reliable sources in Wikipedia and can't be used uh, for citation. Uh, whereas a blog post might be considered a reliable source if it was put out by a reputable um, expert under the banner of an organization like the Hocken Library, for example. And that blog post then goes from being someone's opinion to being an actual usable source on Wikipedia. Uh, but we Mike, going to be... there's just, hi, just to interrupt, there's sure. a couple of questions in the chat about. Oh, sure. About I'm not they, seeing the chat. Saying. Here we go. I'm bringing up 
She's still seeing the title slide. Is that right? That shouldn't be right. You should be about three slides in. Yes. Yes. Yeah. We're still seeing the we're still uh, seeing the title slide. We're still seeing a title slide, but you should be seeing a Randall Munro. So we're okay. I'm gonna just escape. So now we're gonna view it this way. Are you seeing my screen now? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. So there was the yeah, um, so Google Slides don't seem to be loading properly. We found this slight problem in the intro. So I'm just gonna show you from, from here. That's all fine. Okay, so that was the slide on Wikipedia projects. There's a link to one lib one ref I was talking about. And here are the definitions of citating citation needed and what you can cite. I will share this slide link with everyone in the chat. Let's hope that it's worked. Yes. So there's the link in the chat to these slides. So you're welcome to um, bring them up and read them at your leisure. Okay. So thank you for letting me know about that because the chat doesn't automatically appear for me, but now I've got it up. Okay. So this is what we need to be doing, finding reliable sources and adding them as references for anything that's not an obvious piece of common knowledge. And remember, Wikipedia is read worldwide, so something that everyone in New Zealand might know is not necessarily going to be common knowledge for a teenager in the States or um, you know, a retiree in Ukraine or anyone who's reading English language Wikipedia. So now I'll just run through, I'll show you the instructions and then we're going to walk through them one at a time live. So essentially we're going to go to the Wikipedia page, we're going to edit it, we're going to make sure we're using the visual editor, we're going to click at the end of the sentence, use the cite button, and the nice thing about Wikipedia citation is it can take a URL or an ISBN or a DOI, and it can automatically generate a reference from that. It usually works really well, sometimes not quite well. You can edit the reference if it's not right, then you go publish changes and bingo, your, ref your citation now appears in the reference box at the bottom. So that's the brief verbal introduction. There are the one page instructions which you can go back to. And now I'm going to actually demonstrate this. So uh, let's find an article. Oh, here's one. So this is an article about a shrub that lives um, on Kaithiriti Spit near uh, uh, Te Wahora Lake Ellesmere. And it's a pretty well referenced article. There's lots of information about it, except at the very end, I see this um, last sentence here. In 2018, a farmer destroyed about one third of Kaithiriti Spit's Minabika Estonii plants by spraying and cultivating three paddocks to plant oats. Citation needed. Now that citation needed doesn't just pop up automatically, that's added by a human being. Um, there are people who just go through Wikipedia articles and look for facts that need a citation, that need a reference. And that's just one of the volunteer things they do. And in fact, you could be one of these people if you want to. It's not hard to add citation needed, but I think it's more important to, and Siobhan, oh, I think Siobhan is, is backing me up. She's got my back. She's adding a whole bunch of information in the chat there about how to add citation. Thank you. Um, anyone can add a citation needed, but I personally think it's much, much better to just go and add the citation. So here's one I prepared earlier. Here is a stuff article um, that backs up that actual fact about how this, this happened. And back in 2018, a farmer wiped out one third of the species because he wanted to plant oats for his cows. Um, so it's a, it's a reputable source, reliable source, it's well referenced, well, well, well sourced. Um, this counts as a perfectly good Wikipedia source. It's by Dominic Harris, 1st of May 2018. There's the title. And it may have been printed in a newspaper at some point, but at the moment we're going to just use it at the, the website as a stuff reference. So we'll um, use that. It's going to be a web reference. So we want that reference to be here. Uh, instead of the citation needed. Okay, so now I'll walk you through how I'll do this. So the first thing we want to do is edit the article. Now you can go up to the edit button at the top here is the best place to go. I have an extra button called edit source going on here uh, and we'll see, you'll see why in a second. So if I go edit, I get this loading bar 
And it looks about the same, except I've got all these buttons at the top. I can change the font, the style, add a list. It's like Microsoft Word, add a heading and so forth. I'm now in edit mode. Now, hopefully this is what you see. If you click edit and it looks something like, he said, oh, screen's frozen. That's interesting. There we go. And it looks something like this, which is not as nice. You are, congratulations, you're now editing source mode. You're editing the code. This is the way Wikipedia used to work. It used to have all this awful, awful um, code, which is sort of like HTML, but not quite. And people had to learn that. Um, but luckily, there's the visual editor now, and it should be on by default. But if it's not, you can switch backwards and forwards because between them. You look for this button here that looks like a pencil. Personally, I think it looks like a crayon, but everyone calls it a pencil. So, And this lets you switch modes. So if you're not looking at um, nice text, if you're looking at nasty code, switch to visual editor. And there you are. This is what you should see. OK, so that's the first step. Then we and uh, we can immediately start changing any text on this page, uh, which boggles the mind sometimes of people who are new to Wikipedia, that any random person can just start editing the page. But amazingly, it all actually seems to work out. So I'm going to delete that citation needed. So here we are. We've got a, an unreferenced piece of information. So next step is we click on the Cite button up here. OK. And we're given three tabs, automatic, manual, reuse. I always recommend starting with the automatic citation tools because they're super nice. So let's go back to our stuff article. I'm going to select the, um, ref the URL. Let's go back to this. And I'm going to paste the URL into that box there. And you'll notice what it takes. I mean, it could even take a raw title or a reference from another source. It can take a Wikidata ID, which is increasingly what people are using, um, PubMed IDs or DOIs from journal articles. Uh, it's not too bad with ISBNs um, and not too bad with URLs. So always start with one of these if you can, and it will try and generate a reference. So it has a little think, looks it up in Zotero. And there's our reference there. Now, uh, it's not complete, is it? What's missing? That's right. You're all on mute. It's the um, reporter's name. So that's something we'll need to add. But that's OK. We don't worry about that for the moment. We just get it in there first. So the next step is we go insert. An auto-numbered reference appears. And we do know that we need to sort out the reporter's name. So. I'm going to go edit. Now, this manual box pops up. And this is what we could use if we didn't, if, if the automatic doesn't work, we have to go to the manual option. Um, but that's all fine. So I'm just going to pull this over to another screen, go back to where we were. OK, so the last name is Harris Dominic. Can't type in. With people looking over my shoulder. Um, it's the 1st of May 2018, so that's gone wrong because the website's obviously um, using one date and the actual story was filed on a different one. That looks good, that looks good. Da, 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 da. We can always, you, you can archive these things as well. We won't talk about that today. That's the date I accessed. Wait, the website stuff, it's in English, it's actually in New Zealand English. Don't worry about that. Now, if there are anything missing, for example, it's a book and you can't find where to put the second author or the editor, for example, there are 109 other fields you can choose from. So just search for if you wanted to find, say, in a book, the editor last name, editor first name, or author, last names two, author first name two. All of that stuff's available to you, but it only shows the most used fields when you're putting a reference in. So let's apply changes. OK, there we go. That's more like it. I do like a nice reference. So that's all good. Now, we've got a reference in there, and now we finally have to publish it. We have to make the page go live. So we go publish. Now, it is always considered good form. It's considered polite to put some sort of summary describing what it is you changed. And it can be quite brief, but it just helps uh, people to... to um, 
figure out where, where stuff goes um, in the edit history. Uh, yeah, someone's asked if a standard date format to use. No, there are, there, as long as it's consistent within the page, you don't need to use a particular form of citating, citing the date. Some people care about the stuff and will go through and clean up your stuff afterwards. If they don't like the way you've, you've expressed the date, they'll fix it so it's consistent. So there are always other editors coming along doing cleanup. So don't worry too much about that, as long as the, the factual information is correct. Okay, so let's save the, so the change. Now what I'm going to do here is I'm actually going to tag one lib, one ref in my edit summary. So if I use this hashtag on my edit summary, then it can be searched for and people can actually use it to generate statistics for this campaign to see how many people put stuff in one lib, one ref, which is nice. So try and remember to put this in your hashtag, uh, this hashtag in your edits. Okay, um, it's not a minor edit if you're adding any information at all. Um, that minor edits are for like cleaning up a tiny typo or something like that. Almost all edits that actually add content are standard edits, not minor. And watch this page means it can be added to your watch list so you can see if someone else comes along and adds or changes content later on. But won't worry about that for the moment. Publish changes. Okay, and now if we go down to the references, right down the bottom, we'll see there number 16 is our reference for this fact. Okay, so we're, congratulations, we've improved Wikipedia. So I've said just added one reference. Now, let's go back to the slides. So that was just to recap, that's the series of instructions we went to. Go on edit link, made sure we were using the visual editor, find that button, which I call the crayon, um, to change if we're not. Click after the punctuation, by the way, that is standard style. Um, references go after punctuation in Wikipedia. Site link, use the automatic tool. You can generate and insert the reference and edit it like I did after you've inserted it, if it's not quite right. If it doesn't work, you select the manual tab and you can also reuse a reference. Let's just demonstrate those two. So let's imagine that I'm editing and I wanted to put a book reference after the at the end of the sentence. I'm not actually going to do it. I go site, manual, and there there are some pre-made templates for website, for news story, for book, for journal. I use news a lot because a lot of the newspapers on the West Coast don't go online, so I have to format it like a news story. And then we're back to this again. First name, source day, publication, URL, access date. And if I have more information, like for some reason the page number is never an option here. I always add the page number as well. Okay, so I can add a book. Ditto has a similar sort of format. And again, often you'll want to put like editor, whoops, editor last name, editor first name, or if there's another author, last name two, three, four, five, or six, and the same for first name. So you can um, dig out all the, there are hundreds of fields and you'll find the information you require to make a good reference. Okay. So that's adding uh, a reference manually. Uh, and finally, if you wanted to reuse a reference, most people don't notice this. There's a reuse tab here, which has all the references for the article in it. And all you need to do you don't need to type to put this in again. You just click once and it reinserts that same reference somewhere else. And it's now used twice on the page. So there's no need to just retype references again and again. You can just reuse ones you've already done. Okay. But we're not going to do that. We're going to leave this page. Um, so that's the um, guts of how it works. Well, I've got some links to show you and some more stuff to talk about, but now I think if you want to unmute yourself, um, we, can take, uh, que we can take questions or unpack anything that's not clear. So ask away. All good? Also feel free just to drop a question in the chat as well. Okay. All right. So how would we go about doing this process? We've got, do we start with articles or we, do we start with references? Well, there's some different tools to help us out. Um, uh, in the list of links here, I've got this tool called Citation Hub, which I think is more fun than practical, but 
we can give it a go. So we choose Citation Hunt. And it's a tool that finds a random page with a citation needed for a fact. And it can be about anything. In this case, it's about Finlandization. Really, I don't think I feel like I can do this. Atmospheric entry. Okay. Planned economy. Hmm. All right. You see, the problem here is that I'm not exactly sure where I would find, um, I guess, um, there's something to do with the crystal on Red Cross and Red Crescent movement. Oh, I don't know where I would find information about that. So you see, it's a, it's a nice idea, but I don't necessarily have um, to, to, I mean, we've, we've uh, uh, led our subscription to the Grinnell Daily Advertiser lapse, unfortunately, here in Hokitika. So I don't have the up-to-date reference I'd use for Grinnell Farmer's Market. But um, it's a cute idea, but it, it's interesting sometimes just to click through and see the amount of stuff that's missing in Palestinian Christians, percentage of Palestinian traumatic amputation. Oh gosh, that'll be fun. Let's find a let's find a reference that looks at the statistical breakdown of traumatic amputations. <laughs> okay, so this isn't always necessarily the best way to go. How would we narrow it down? Well, here are a couple of links which Siobhan put pulled out to my attention. Um, and one of them is New Zealand articles with no references at all. Okay, so this is generated once a week. There's an automatic rundown of all the different problems in New Zealand related articles. So this list here, so the Aurora River, um, some of this stuff, the Big Day Out, Big Mountain Short Film Festival. Oh, that's right. Let's have a look at it. Okay, so it's a film festival in Oakune. So any Taranaki librarians here want to come and sort this out? So it's Oakune Film Festival. There's a bit of information in here. Isn't that cool? Look at that. 2000. Oh my God, it goes through year by year. What's missing is an entire references section. So there are actually no references in this whatsoever. Um, so I suspect this has all been put up as self-promotion by the Big Mountain Short Film Festival which is not on, by the way. But uh, you could help make this into a legitimate, well-sourced article if you had access to, for example, newspaper coverage of the film festival. You wouldn't just cite their own website, though. Um, uh, yes, there is. And in fact, there is an Australian one. If you go to uh, the links but thing here, um, you can go to Wikimedia Australia's One Lib One Ref page which has other tools for Australia-related articles without references. So any Australians here, feel free to, to tackle that. And most countries will have um, similar lists generated from their own wiki projects. So this would be a really useful one if you wanted to pick, adopt one article like this and say, I'm going to try and improve this article with uh, newspaper or magazine stories that I know we have, or if there's been a feature or something, go talk to them. Don't just recycle information from their own website because that's not always the most accurate. Uh, and it's not, it doesn't meet the criteria of an independent source for Wikipedia purposes. So someone will probably get grumpy with you. But you know what? It's better than zero references at all. So another link here on the slides, which again, I've shared with you in the um, chat, is the biographies of living people without that are missing sources. So again, here's a bunch of Wikipedia articles and these are names, some of these names you'll know. Annie Whittle, for example. Oh, I remember Annie Whittle. Um, okay, so she was in World's Fastest Indian, fancy that. So there's a filmography, there's a discography. Um, but you'll notice there's basically two references and one of them is um, archived listener article, which probably needs to be fixed up. Um, and the other is a uh, TV mini site story on the TVNZ website. So I'm feeling sure that we can do better to try and improve this. But even tracking down um, a published article in uh, the listeners' archives, for example, would be a really good start. So there are plenty of sources here that could help get you started. Now, what I also suggest, though, is going the other way around. So if you're looking, for example, at this plant, discard my edits, you might end up finding a, a book about New Zealand's native shrubs, for example. Um, there's a couple of common ones in most libraries in New Zealand. 
And you would be surprised to find, maybe not surprised, to find that books are not heavily used as sources in Wikipedia articles, uh, at least books that aren't online. And that's because a lot of the editing is being done remotely or might even be done from outside New Zealand. It's not done by someone who's sitting in a library or has a, an extensive reference collection on New Zealand plants. So you might decide instead to pick a, a book off the shelf. There's a couple of wonderful new, wonderful large reference books on New Zealand trees, for example, or photographic guides to New Zealand ferns or shrubs, and go through page by page and look up each of the species or people or places mentioned in your reference book and go through and add a reference, add some information and a reference from that book um, to the article and improve it in that way. And sometimes you can actually get right into it. And you can also save, of course, save the text for the reference in a text file and then just paste it in in source view when you get used to this. And it can be pretty fast, but you can rapidly improve large numbers of articles this way. Okay, someone's asked, if I, can you be traced as the person that added the reference? Well, what we haven't gone into is that, yes, you. one of the first things you should do is you should create an account in Wikipedia. So you can edit anonymously, uh, but then you'll only show up as a four digit number, as an IP number. And if instead, if you look at the Wikipedia main page and you see, you know, um, create an account, the only thing you need to come up with is a goofy username, um, like giant flightless birds, and uh, a password. You don't even have to supply an email address, so you can be as anonymous as you like. But if you do that, it means that you can um, see all of your contributions in a list here. So, and everyone else can see this too. So here are all the changes that I've been making. So I was adding references to an article about the artist Brent Trelay yesterday as part of the West Coast Arts Project. So and anyone can see that as well. So it's not a bad idea to make a user page and you can even make, um, sorry, to, to create a user account and you can make a whole page about yourself if you want to, and mine is extensive because I do this sort of thing for a living, but you can add a few sentences about yourself and explain where you're working and the sort of work that you're interested in and that you're a newcomer to Wikipedia. So yeah, every Wikipedia is transparent and all edits can be traced back to someone. Um, yeah, if you don't sign in, it, uh, if you don't um, log in, it will just publish your edit under an IP address, which is not very helpful. Now, if you do something wrong, um, anyone can come along and fix it. So don't worry. If you accidentally delete an entire article, uh, which I've done in the past, um, it will all be instantly revived by some well some some good Samaritan who'll come along and say, whoops, go back to the edit history and undo that last edit and roll it back to the previous version. So it's uh, nothing, you can't break Wikipedia, it's all good. If you don't think someone's reference is any good, go ahead and delete it or replace it. And just make a note in your edit comment to say, this is a, not a re reliable source or this link is broken and here's a better one. So yeah, go for it. As they say, be bold. Don't, don't bother about um, the hurting other people's feelings. Just go ahead and fix it. And as long as you're polite, and if someone asks you, why did you do that? Just be polite and explain why. Uh, so you, these, that's, that's three questions in one from Natalie. Now, if you can't find a reference and think that the information is false, you can add a citation needed tag yourself. So for example, if I, if I could not find any reference to the fact that this is, this species is extremely rare and threatened in the wild. Okay. Um, I can insert uh, a template. But actually, I think I can probably just type it directly from here. I start by typing two curly brackets, and that tells us tells it that it wants a template. And which template do I want? I'm going to search for it. I'm going to search for citation needed. Okay. Ah, yeah, there we go. Right. Don't worry about the transclusion. Just go insert. And there it is. So just to reiterate, that was the two curly brackets uh, are used to start any template. And if I, okay. If I go into the source editing mode, you just look at the first paragraph here, and there's the citation needed template in there. And again, it's using the, using the double curly brackets. So yeah, you are welcome to, um, hang on, 
go back to edit mode. You're welcome to add a citation needed if you come across, as Rob suggested, that exact problem. You just cannot find a source for this stuff. Um, but I am going to, whoa, let's delete all of that because it's not true. Let's put an automatic. Hang on. Go back to source editing and take it all out. Um, don't want to get into trouble. There we go. Out we go. And back to edit again. Right. Um, you're welcome to um, add a citation needed if you think there's really a controversial fact. If there's a whole section there that you just think is, this seems so completely bogus, or it might actually be fake news or false, then just delete it. Um, it's still saved in older versions of the article. So if someone really, really wants it back, they can go ahead and add it back in, but they should probably come up with a source for it. Again, all past versions of an article are saved, so you're never destroying anything by removing stuff. Okay, any other questions in live or in the chat? Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do, um, yeah, there's, as Shiv Warns mentioned, the edit summary is really important. If you're just starting off, don't err, err on the side of quite long edit summaries. Don't feel like you're being a bit of a goof for explaining in some detail what you're doing. You find that more experienced editors put very short edit summaries because they're powering through a whole lot of edits and they don't have time um, but you as a beginner, just, just go ahead and explain. It'll also make it really clear to someone reading the history that, oh, okay, yep, this person was trying to do this and this, and that's why they did that, and that provides some context. So um, references and notes. We're not going to get into notes here, but the, you can put in a footnote here. Um, this is using a different um, refless system. Um, most articles won't have notes. Some articles will have... Uh, a more complicated referencing system like Harvard, where they give a uh, bibliography and then they have a series of author year and page numbers. That's more often if you're referring to just one book for most of the article. Um, and that's also a perfectly legitimate referencing system, but we're not going to cover it here. We're going to do the, the most basic, simple one. If people want to do the fancy referencing system, they'll go ahead and convert your reference into that. So don't worry. Um, if someone cares enough about referencing, then they'll, they will do all the cleanup. It's perfectly okay. You don't actually have to get everything right. You don't have to do everything. Any improvement you make is welcome. So we're just doing this very basic sort of um, dump it in there. So yeah, and uh, as Rob's noted, you notice here, there's no referencing in the introductory statement here. That's right. That's because this is supposed, everything in here is supposed to be a summary of what's something that's already in the main body of the article. So there should be no new facts in this paragraph here, which is why it doesn't need referencing because everything it says is in here. This is just an abstract. So some short articles will only have like one paragraph. So of course there's referencing up here. You don't have to. So when you're putting your references in, stick to the body of the article, not the intro paragraph. Cool. We're just going back to our slides. So there are some, uh, a few things to chase up here. This is the link to the one to one ref. The Australians are doing quite an organized campaign this year and they're working with us. So there's some good links and information on their page. There's a Twitter account, Wiki Library, which covers some of this, which is always worthwhile um, to uh, follow, and they will answer questions and retweet stuff. There are further Zoom sessions organized by Wikimedia Australia, which you are welcome to jump in on. If you are intrigued by this, try it out and then feel like you want to chat with someone else about it or see it again, just join one of these Zoom sessions. Again, links in this um, uh, slideshow. And the tools here. Um, you'll find that when I go and look at the uh, articles with no references at all, it is just a tiny subset, a tiny subset of all the problems we have to solve. I'll go right to the top. Look at all this stuff. Clarification, rewrites needed, self-contradictory articles, too technical, dead links, wiki links needed, peacock terms. That's one I like very much. That's where someone's trying to puff something up on Wikipedia. No, thank you. Promotional tone. Oh, no. Weasel worded phrases. <laughs> Lots of those. So, but we are only, we're sticking mostly down here in the uh, referencing section here. So we've got failed verification where a link's been put in and it doesn't actually seem to exist. So someone might need to go some clean up there. Um, unsourced passages, unreferenced BLPs, all sorts of fun stuff. So 
you can see that there's a lots to do um, in Wikipedia and we're just looking at, we're just scratching the surface. But if you enjoy working with one lib, one ref, you make your edit and you think you'd like to do more, there's plenty to get on with. Um, if you go back to the uh, link that I was showing in the West Coast Task Force, that's uh, a, a doorway into all the other Wikipedia meetings that are going on in New Zealand, the online chat, the organized editathon events and conferences, some of which may be happening in a city near you this year. So lots to continue with. But for the moment, let's just in the spirit of one lib, one ref, try and commit to ourselves to editing Wikipedia and adding just one reference between now and June the 5th. And if you can do that, fantastic. Um, yeah, and Siobhan has added again some note to the uh, to plug the drop-in sessions that are being run. Um, that's that's fantastic. If you like, would like sort of one-to-one -one help or want to work with someone and um, have them help you as you go and do edits. Okay, so that's all I wanted to go over in this session. Um, I think this has been super cool. Thank you for all the great comments and questions. Um, if there's any other questions, just drop a quick note in the chat or you can chase me up personally you're welcome to send me an email um, or catch up with me at adsbill on twitter and if we don't have anything else to say i'll just um close with uh, a little karakia unuhuya 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 ki te upu topu nui ki awatea ki mama te ngako te tinana te wairua i te ara takata koia rā e rongo Fakairia ake ki ronga ki a tina hui e taiki e. Thank you all so much, and I will hope to see you in real life at some point, perhaps at the Lianza conference. Kakite. <laughs>